Right, welcome back to yet another video. Uh, it's a nice summer's day again in Britain and during coronavirus quarantine. I'm glad I live in the country where I can uh, actually get out and do some stuff rather than a flat. Uh, but this is my uh, Eiffel Williams P7E trailer. It's a 7x4 trailer. Uh, I bought this about three years ago. Brand new. I think there's a, probably a video of it uh, not long after I purchased it on the channel. Uh, I bought it at the time because I only had a little tiny hatchback. I'd not long passed my uh, driving test because the unladen weight of this is hardly anything if you look at the weight plate it's only about 205 kilos uh, this has been an excellent trailer I, it was quite expensive new I think I paid about grand for it um, and that was without the top uh, the top I didn't originally need but now I started keeping sheep etc um, I bought the top probably about two and a half years ago uh, I paid about 300 pounds for it whereas the new price is about six they are quite expensive uh, but it was virtually new when I got it and it did also come with the uh, the livestock gates, which I've got over here. That's what we used to use, and that is completely knackered now. It only ever gets used for hay storage. There's the gates. This is actually a P60, um, which is the iteration before the P7. Uh, if anyone's in the UK, I say it's completely knackered, but all it really needs is a couple of wheel bearings um, and the lights doing. Uh, the reason that I stopped using it really is because it wasn't quite big enough to carry quads. It's only a six foot rather than a seven, which you can't get all of them in. But anyway, that's that's by the by. It's not technically mine. It's actually a uh, family member's. Uh, so I've never ever touched this. Uh, it's done loads of journeys. It's carried all sorts of animals, mowers, quads, the lot. Uh, so it's probably done about twenty, thirty thousand miles now. So I thought, uh, while well, I've got a bit of time on my hands, it's probably time to check it over and bit of give it a bit of a service. And. Um, I know it's uh, not the most interesting thing to do a video on, but to be honest, I'm running out of interesting stuff for now, because so I'm not getting anything in and out. As I said, 7x4. I chose these flotation rims when I got it, because uh, they can go off road. If you ever want to tow it with a quad, aluminium drop ramp on it, which is handy for, again, bikes and stuff like that. Uh, you can actually put a sheep deck in it, believe it or not. Uh, it's got the mounting points there. You can see the inside's had a bit of hammer. If I open it up. Come on. Super, oh, that one's already done. You can see the sides where they've had a Arctic Cat 700 diesels loaded into them. I've got one of them, a video on one of them on the channel. You can see the uh, where the rims shoved right up against the side because the width which is another reason why I bought the P70 rather than continuing to use that P6 over there. The width was um, only just about doable, even on the P7. Uh, got a couple of other areas that we're giving some attention today. We just get in here. You can see that area is all chewed up. That's from a, uh, a blade on a mower, so we'll have to put some bitumen or something on that. Uh, that front is starting to corrode where the, uh, the galvanizer has been rubbed off. Well, it's not actually gas. It's actually, I think it's aluminium, so I'm not sure why. Uh, so we'll have to just have a little look at that. Uh, this floor, I'd advise if you want to buy one new, don't get this uh, wooden floor. Well, do obviously they all come with wooden floor, but get the checker plate over it because this is having some serious hammer. You can see various areas with the chunks out of it, and this is going to rot eventually. So I'm going to clean it off at first. See, the top is absolutely rancid. Uh, we've got a couple of lights out in the back, which we'll have a look into. Might have to hook the truck up to it to uh, see which ones they are, because I can't remember. Um, give it a good polish. I know that sounds a bit guy, but uh, I've got nothing else to do. We've got to change these marker lights. Um, normally you can just change the covers, but I don't think we'll get away with it on this one, because the, uh, the mounting for the screw is missing. The other side should be able to get away with it. These don't come with jockey wheels from new, which I thought was really annoying. Uh, they came with just a little drop down bar, which I can probably show you on this. I took it off that and put it on the back of this. There you go, that's what its uh, jockey wheel was when it was new. If you're in the uh, UK and you want to buy this, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> Unless you want to see a restoration on it, which I'll do. Uh, so I got this one for about 30 quid from an auction, which is a handy off-road jack. So yeah. I think what I'll do now is I'll pressure wash it off uh, and I'll be back when I've done it. Right, so that was uh, quite a fair jet washing session to be fair. I've been out there for about half an hour. It's pretty covered. 
Um, but what it has done hasn't done is uh, cleaned all the mould out the uh, sort of I don't know how to call it. This aluminium sort of pitted from the factory. It's got like a rough surface finish to it. There's a lot of uh, muck left in there. So I just covered it in some of this snow foam and I'm going to use a sponge and this uh, rather nice alloy wheel brush to really get in there and clean some of that up. Uh, so that'll be my uh, job for the next hour. It's quite a good detergent this uh, soap. It's such a, some uh, Carter snow foam I think it's called. And it does help to lift some of the muck out of the aluminium. So I'll, uh, I'll do that, jet wash it back off and uh, we'll see the finished product. Right, so I've finished uh, cleaning up now. Uh, it's looking a fair bit better. Uh, obviously I did the uh, the foam and washed all that off. I've used some of this uh, slick mist or speed wax, whatever you want to call it, uh, to uh, just go over the um, aluminium a bit to get some of the factory shine up. Which has actually worked quite well. It's looking pretty new. don't think I'm somebody who fusses over this sort of stuff and does it regularly. This is the first time I've done this in about three years, simply because I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> Um, I've also gone over the tyres with this, this uh, tyre and trim shine. Not really to shine it up, but it's supposed to absorb into the rubber uh, and protect it a little bit from UV rays because this trailer does sit uh, outside exposed to the sunlight. And I've used some of the uh, the bumper and trim gel on these uh, mud flaps. You can see where people have tried to climb on it. <laughs> um, every time I tell anybody when I'm going to collect stuff, don't climb on the mud flaps, but they do it anyway. Um, what else have I noticed? Yeah, I've noticed a couple of bits that do need replacing. I forgot to say, when I first had this trailer, I forgot to uh, clamp the um, pins in when I set off from somebody, somebody's place and uh, absolutely obliterated these rubbers that sit on here to protect the, uh, the aluminium when you're dropping the tailgate down. So I have to for, uh, order a few more of them. And the top comes off and on extremely regularly because I don't like it on there when I'm picking anything up like a mower or a quad. I only have it on there when uh, I'm using it for livestock. Um, so as a result, these rubber things that the uh, top sits on, and it sort of clamps down onto them, only one of them is still in existence. <laughs> the uh, the top's been shaved off that one, and the two on the other side are just completely missing, so I'm going to have to get some new ones of them. Uh, so I've got it jacked up now. Oh, actually, before I say that, if you're ever going to look at one of these to purchase, there's three primary plates you need, or four things, really. Each trailer in the UK, if you didn't know, has to have a VIN from I think it was about 2006 so the VIN number location is there on these there, you can also find it on the plates so make sure them two match because they've probably been nicked otherwise uh, you've got your model plates with a serial number and just your general information that's your serial number and your VIN as I just stated and here I may as well remove that I can't believe that's still hanging on there after three years uh, I will pick that up in a minute you've got your uh, other information of uh, manufacturer information I think that is um, obviously I'm not really so sure, I think it's more regulatory information like type um, trying to think where the year is on one of these there is somewhere you can work out the year, oh yeah within the VIN so if you go and look it up I can't remember exactly how to tell but within that VIN I for Williams use a, uh, a year code which is quite easy to tell when it was manufactured because these have been produced since the 80s so they, can, they could potentially be very old so I've got it jacked up um, and unsurprisingly, to me at least, there's absolutely zero play in anything. The wheel bearings are good, they sound lovely, no noise from it at all. Uh, if you didn't know on these P7Es from about 2000, uh, the bearings are completely sealed. You don't need to take them apart and grease them. Uh, when they're gone, they need replacing, it's as simple as that. It's got a torsion beam underneath the suspension. Uh, all the bushings in my torsion beam are fine. Uh, it's very simple really, uh, that bar there is connected to the wheel is under pressure uh, from a spring within the axle, well you know what I mean, so when you're going up and down it literally just relies on that pressure to keep it strung or to provide the suspension, it works quite well really. So what else we got to do on it, oh yeah we're going to take the lights at the back now and see if there's any bulbs gone. Um, I'm going to fill that hitch with lithium grease, which I've got in here, on the shelf. I won't film me doing it because it's really mucky to do. I've checked around all the welds, you should also do that whenever you um, service a trailer, particularly if it's ever been overloaded in its life. This one hasn't, but it does carry almost full capacity all the time. 
because obviously the capacity of these is 500 kilo and things like an Arctic Cat diesel will weigh about four. So your seam welds are all underneath for your torsion beam. Uh, you want to check your wiring as well, make sure that's not chafed. Uh, so yeah, I reckon now I'll pull them covers off the back and see if uh, any bulbs are gone. Right, so I've got my uh, light covers off now. I would always recommend uh, leaving your screws within the covers to make sure you don't lose them. Uh, when you've got these covers off, you want to check for any water ingress, because these type of plastic lights do uh, let in a lot of water. Mine haven't, so they're quite nice. Uh, none of my bulbs are blown at all, uh, which was a bit confusing, but then I've hooked it up to this, which uh, also has a tail bar on it, and the lights all work, so it must be that the uh, little socket or a bit of the wiring is chafed on this, because when I uh, plugged it back into that, this is only the one brake light that doesn't work. So I'm suspecting that the tow bar wiring on that is the fault, not the trailer. So that's fine. If you've been fussy and yours were full of water, you could uh, take the connections all out and put a bit of dielectric grease in them. Uh, I don't have any, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, you should also put a bit of dielectric grease in your uh, seven pin socket. Uh, well, I've got an adapter because these now in the UK come with 13 pin from the factory. Uh, if you've been really fussy, you could also undo your jockey wheel and fill it with multi-purpose grease. So yeah, I think really that about wraps it up. Uh, not the longest or probably the most interesting video in the world, but at least it's something out there. Um, as I say, let me know what you think I should do with this. Um, I can either sell it, once this lockdown is over, um, or we can do a little restoration video on it and perhaps either sell it in a sorted state or even start using it for other bits and pieces. So yeah, let me know what you want to see next. I've got a few bits here. I've got this little old mower, which we do have a video on that my friend's editing. We've got this, which I might do a servicing video on. That's gone tomorrow. Just forget about that. The diesel quad I've got an update to do on. Things aren't very good with that. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, take the top back on this and I'll see you in the next one. Right, so just a little follow on to this video. I wasn't sure whether to bother filming this or not. Uh, but I forgot to put the bitumen in the uh, the damaged areas of the floor. You can see how deep that one is. Uh, I'd say it's probably halfway through the actual ply. Uh, so they're pretty dry now. They've been drying for about two hours. There's a number here from loading items without wheels, etc. Uh, so I'm going to get as much of this stuff on as possible. Uh, when you're doing this, you've got to remember every brush you use will be complete scrap after. So buy like a 25p brush or whatever. All right. So I'm just going to fill them in and I'll just show you quickly when they're done. Right, so I did just start uh, pitching them in the areas that were chipped, but it looked pretty naff. <laughs> so I ended up just pitching them in the whole floor. Uh, they should provide some pretty good protection. Pitching is really nasty stuff. Uh, you don't want to get it on your hands or anything, but it does work really, really well as a solid coating. Uh, it'll take a good couple of days to dry, so I wouldn't put anything in there uh, for a couple of days after you do do it, but... Yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. It will dry a matty colour, it won't remain glossy like oil. Uh, it's basically the same stuff as you use in roads, but just watered down really. So yeah, uh, let me know in that uh, other trailer, as I say, whether you think I should do a restoration on it, and I'll see you in the next video.